This is part one of the offensive scheme in the Chiefs playbook. Part one is solely in the tight Y off formation. In this formation, we will break down five plays, discussing what adjustments you can use in each play to expose any defense. First thing you want to do is set up the right audibles. The audibles we will be setting up are tight end corner, mesh spot, RPO zone alert glance, and jet touch pass. These are the audibles that you will have at your disposal every snap. What makes these four audibles so dominant is that the defense has to adjust certain ways to guard each specific play. So if they are lined up in man defense that stops the RPO, chances are that that defense would not be able to stop tight end corner as tight end corner has a multitude of ways to beat man defense. So using these audibles will make your offense much more versatile. The first play we're going to go over is tight end corner. Tight end corner is the foundational play that makes this scheme go. 99% of the time you will want to pick this play to line up in every snap for two reasons. The first reason is that the base route concepts and the routes you can audible to beat every defense. The second reason is that the play helps you be able to read the defense. So in this play I saw that there was one high safety with corner 78 yards off the ball. So I knew it was either going to be a cover 3 or cover 1. But to narrow it down to one coverage, the next step is to read the slot defender. If the slot defender has an outside shade, you know that it's cover 3. But because it can be tough reading what side the corner is shaded to, a way to know 100% is to look at the straight line coming out of the wide receiver. If the corner is to the outside of the line, you will know for a fact that he has outside shade. The same goes for even shade or inside shade. So now that we know that, let's go over how tight end corner can destroy defenses. Now the base play against Manor zone is incredibly efficient. These corner routes fry man coverage along with the inside whip route and one of the best routes in Man 24, the triangle route by the running back. If you run the base play against the zone though, you will mostly have the triangle route or the inside whip route for an easy completion. Just read what side the linebacker or the user chooses to guard to dictate who you throw to. Versus man coverage, we are going to utilize slants, zigs, verticals, and the stock corner routes within the play. For this look, we are going to put X on a slant, A on a vertical, and B on a zig. Now your reads can vary in this play depending on the defense and the situation you are in, but in this play you will see that every route was open. But the main two reads were the slant and in the triangle route. All I did to dictate who I threw to was read the user. Because the user chose to guard the slant, that left the running back wide open down the field. Now I'm going to show you a setup that can beat blitzes or cover one. What you want to do is put A on a vertical, B on a flat, and RB on a wheel. On the back side, put X on a slant. Your first reads in this play are the deep balls to the running back or the tight end on a vertical. If you see that they have a step on the defender, throw a lob pass while freeforming the left stick up for an over the shoulder grab to your receiver. Also notice that if the pressure is getting to from a blitz, you can hit the wheel route quick as well as the slant or the corner route backside. Against zone defenses in this play, I'm going to show you two ways to exploit zones using different ways to run a flood concept and hitting the seams against cover 3. Now in this play, I knew the defense was in a cover 3 with one high safety, corner 7 to 8 yards off the ball, and the slot corner having an outside shade. So I created a flood concept by putting X on a streak and A on a drag. It is important to know that when you are in a condensed set like this, you want to run this concept to the weak side of the field. This will make sure that the deep safety is pulled away from the corner route by the vertical route. Then I put B on a zig and left the triangle route by the running back as safety options. Now what this flood concept does to really any zone including cover 3 is create an open window for the corner route. The drag by the tight end will pull down the purple zone and the vertical will pull the deep blue away from the corner route which creates wide open space to throw to the corner. Also note that against the cover 3 the seams are a perfect place to attack. The seams are in between the hash marks and the numbers. So in this play my opponent was playing a lot of cover 3 in all out blitzes. So I kept all my man beating routes on the field while changing the slot wide receiver to a vertical in case this was a disguise cover 3. When I snapped the ball you will see that the defense dropped back into a cover 3 which led the seam route to be wide open for a walk in touchdown. The next play we're going to go over is mesh spot. The base play in mesh spot can also be effective especially in a situation where you need short first downs or you're just desperate to start something on offense. Your first reads will be the crossing drag routes. If you see any of these receivers open, give it to them for a positive gain. If the crosses are not there, you can look at the spacing route in the middle of the field or the vertical and the wheel on either sides of the field. Now against the zone and mesh spot, we're going to go over a play I like to call overload. This play can work against any zone coverage you face. What you're going to do is motion the tight end over to the outside. 
then put him on a smoke screen, then put B on a street. The goal here is to read these two defenders. If this defender stops his feet to guard the smoke screen and the vertical pulls the deep zone away, you will have the running back wheel wide open after he passes this defender. On the back side, I put Y on a zig and X on a slant in case I needed other throwing options. The next play is RPO zone alert glance, and this is one of the hardest RPOs to defend in Madden 24. In this play, we will either throw it to the bubble or give it to the running back for an inside run. To dictate if you're going to throw the ball to the bubble or hand the ball off, we have to look at the defenders lined up over the receivers on the bubble side. If they are pressing the receivers, we can predetermine what we will do with the ball pre-snap, which is run the ball because it may be too risky to throw to the bubble when the defenders are that close to the line of scrimmage. When we hand the ball off though, one of the key details to notice is how well the offensive line is able to block in this play. Everyone in the first level is swallowed up, which lets you break free and make people miss in the second and third level for huge gains on the ground. If you see that the defenders are off the ball, snap it and check the defenders if they are backing up or flat footed. If they are, throw it to the bubble read your blocks, and get some easy rack yards. Also note that if the defenders are backed off, but start to run forward towards their man, it may be safer to just hand the ball off. It is also worth mentioning that this bubble screen has worked best against zone defenses. The next play we're going to go over is Jet Touch Pass. When you take the rest of the plays into account as a defense, this play is extremely hard to stop. The most important part when it comes to adjustments is to ID the furthest defender to the side you are running to. This will make sure the wide receiver blocks the defender out on the perimeter. After that, you want to follow your blocks and get to the outside for huge plays down the field. This play also produces on the goal line. If you struggle to score in the red zone, try this play with the same blocking adjustment and you will see more touchdowns within your offense. The last play we're going to go over is 0-1 Trap. Mixing in this play when you need short yards or even near the goal line is a great idea. The key here is to be patient by not holding in the right trigger to let your blocks develop. If the blocks do what they're supposed to do, you should have wide open gaps down the middle. Then once you get past the first level, you can accelerate through the linebackers and the defensive backs. Now that is part one of the offensive scheme in the Chiefs playbook. If you liked the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe because I'll be coming out with part two very soon. I'll see you next video.